Okay, so here we are at a combined heat and power plant. We're in the um, control room and um, we've built a database to reflect the machines and assets out on plant itself. We're now going to build a route, um, a list of machines in an order we're going to take them um, and then obviously we're going to put them into the analyzer to go out and then collect the data itself. So just going into the uh, CHP plant area and I'm going to give the route a definition, CHP plant. Okay, so that's CHP plant. The monitoring frequency here is de defined as 30 days and we have a list of assets that I'm just going to select those assets from the database and throw them into the route and click on the save button. That may just take a few seconds. There's probably about 30 to 40 assets being put in the route currently. Okay, so we're here ready now to transfer the data from the computer into the analyzer to then go out and take the actual measurements. So we just go to the home page here and select the uh, route function and connect for transfer. So on the um, PC, on the computer system, we've got the actual database configured. We've got the, uh, the route previously defined, CHP plant, and I'm just going to drag and drop the route from the PC, the vibration software, into the actual analyzer in preparation to go out and take our actual measurements. Okay, there's probably a few hundred readings to actually be measured, so it's going to take a few seconds to communicate the data over. So there you go. The data's gone across, and there's nearly 300 measurements defined on the route to go out and then measure um, on our routine. Okay, so having uh, loaded the route into the analyzer, I've been out elsewhere on plant and taken some measurements on various assets. Here we are at the next asset to be measured, the boiler feed pump. I've got it active on the screen, so let's get to it and take the reading. Okay, so here we are at the first measurement point on the boiler feed pump. It's the motor non-drive end. It's important that we measure as near as we possibly can to each bearing location on the machine and we give consideration to measuring horizontally, vertically and actually in line with the shaft. We look to measure in the centre line of the shaft where possible horizontally and equally in the centre line vertically. So, my first point is the motor non-drive end horizontal. I'm going to place the sensor, I'm going to roll the sensor gently onto the monitoring disc and I'm going to give it a second or two to settle. The crystal and the sensor need to be settled and I'm going to press the button. And immediately on the instrument I can validate the data. I'm making sure there's no ski slope presence in my spectrum. I can clearly see there's not good quality data. I'm going to move to the next location, which is the motor non-drive end vertical. Again, roll the sensor onto the monitoring disc, give it a couple of three seconds to stabilize, and away we go. And again, I'm validating the data as it's being measured. That's the non-drive end finish. Not possible to measure actually because of the, cup, uh, the, the fan cowl. We're gonna move through to the drive end now. Here we are at the drive end of the motor. Again, roll the sensor onto the first point at this end, which is the drive end horizontal. Give it a second or two to settle, and again, acquire the data, validate no ski slope, it's clean, good data, move forward to the next point, which is the motor drive end vertically, a little bit more tricky in there, and here we go, a few seconds to settle, good clean data, move to the next point, which is the motor drive end actual, again in the centre line, at kind of three or nine o'clock would be desirable. In an actual direction, we place the sensor onto the monitoring disc, give it a couple of three seconds again to stabilize, and we collect the data and validate the data's good. Okay, I'm also going to measure the uh, bearing temperatures where possible, and we're gonna record the bearing drive end temperature, which I've entered into the, into the uh, data collector, and equally the same on the pump and that's done with maybe a localized temperature gun 
that I'm just going to use and point and shoot the temperature. We're now going to move forward to the drive end of the pump and again we're going to measure horizontally. So again roll the sensor onto the monitoring disc, two or three seconds of stabilisation time and then I'm going to acquire the data, validate the data's good, no ski slope, nice clean data. I'm going to then move to the next point which is the pump drive end vertical. So there we are in the vertical location. Again, two or three seconds to stabilize and then a second or so of time on my instrument. And we're going to collect the data, clean data, no ski slope. We're not able to measure safely an actual reading on the pump drive end, so we're not actually going to take that particular position in this instance. Okay, so just to finalize and finish the machine off, we're going to measure the uh, pump non-drive end. So again, roll the sensor on gently and give it a few seconds to stabilize. Validate the data, nice clean spectrum, no ski slope, we're good to go. Vertically, I have to come slightly off the top dead center here. There's uh, um, just a slight few degrees to the top dead center there, but I'm in a vertical direction, that's good. And then we press the button and validate the data, good again. And then to finalize the pump non-drive end actual location, to take the final measurement and away we go. So that's good. So we've completed the full data set. We've collected spectrum, time waveform at every single position we've measured, every direction that we've actually been able to measure. And we've got nice, clean, clear data, 1600 lines sort of spectra is maybe fairly commonplace. Maybe some people use 3200 lines. Um, maybe four to six averages for a steady state machine like this would be a good adequate setting so I guess that's it you know that's uh, pretty much the story on this particular pump okay so having uh, been out on plant and measured the various assets that were defined on the uh, vibration route initially um, we here back at the computer where the vibration software is housed and the database itself um, obviously the data is currently live in the instrument um, so we want to actually secure that and save it into the database of the vibration software on the PC. So I'm simply going to select the connect for transfer button here that, that establishes communication between the uh, PC and the actual analyzer itself and I'm going to select dump data from the instrument and choose the CHP plant here select the CHP plant and begin data dump. So the data is transferred via the USB connection here, or it could be wireless or um, uh, maybe an Ethernet connection, whatever communication you're using. And the data is now just being sent back into the PC where it will be saved and secured. So that's successfully dumped. Um, so we're now in a position to um, look over that data, to run exception reports, to look at trend analysis, and to do diagnostics on the gathered vibration spectrums, time waveforms, etc., that we've collected on our route today. So that's good.